Alright, so in this uh, video I'm going to focus mostly on the stack effect, but we will also talk about the wind effect and some um, impacts that an unbalanced HVAC system can have on pressure and airflow. So this is a continuation of the pressure and airflow discussion. So um, there's a couple of things that can cause the delta P's um, in and outside of a house. We have uh, some with the wind effect, the stack effect, which is caused by heat, but it can also be caused by cooling. Um, and also fans. Okay, so these are the three things we're going to talk about. So first of all, the wind effect. This is something that does happen, believe it or not. Um, when you have wind, you can see it's blowing primarily from one direction. In this case, it's blowing from left to right. This will actually cause a high pressure zone on the left side of the building, or what's called the windward side of the building. And then the leeward side of the building, um, L-E-E, -E, leeward side, um, that actually uh, will have a negative pressure zone. And remember, the relationship between pressure and airflow is that pressure um, causes air to flow. Air will flow from higher areas of higher pressure to areas of lower pressure. And so when we have this positive pressure, it's going to cause the air to move inside of the house. It's going to also cause some air to move from inside to outside the house. Okay, so you can actually have these um, pressure differences. It, this is something that's not a huge impact on the building. There's not much you can do about it, frankly. I mean, you can put some trees over here, or some other wind blocks, but I mean, there's really not much you can do. But there is, if you if you notice, um, if you're ever in your house on a really windy wet, windy day, and you notice the air is blowing against one side of the building, you actually you can almost feel the pressure difference, um, and that's your wind effect. Okay, so a really uh, much more important one is something called the stack effect. So you want to jot down stack effect. This is a super common phenomenon in buildings, both residential and commercial. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, um, and it happens primarily in the um, heating season. And what you, whenever you have warm air, you know that warm air rises. And so what happens is you have warm air that's rising up through a building and you think about it sort of like pushing that air toward the top of the building and anytime this is really important anytime you force air into an into an area it's going to increase the air pressure and conversely anytime you pull air away from an area it's going to drop the pressure there so what you have here is you have these two broad pressure zones where like a positive pressure zone on the upper side of the house or building and a negative zone on the lower side where those two meet is called and you want to jot this down the neutral pressure plane you think what that term means pretty straightforward it's a plane right so a, a, the two-dimensional flat surface um, and it's neutral pressure so these arrows on this drawing are actually uh, meant to indicate the magnitude of the, the pressure um, or the delta P in that zone so you can see the smaller arrows here are means lower pressure um, and then the bigger air, bigger green arrows means the more positive. The, the smaller red arrows means a light, you know, a little bit of negative. And then the bigger red arrows mean more negative. And so it should be pretty obvious uh, looking at this image that the further you get away from your neutral pressure plane, the bigger the magnitude of that delta P is. So you get further above it, you end up with a higher and higher and higher pressure and you go below it and you get lower and lower and lower pressure and again that's that's just the nature of the the physics of it as the air moves up the further you get away from that pressure plane the, the higher that pressure is going to be so why do we care because this is going to cause you think about it we have a high pressure at the top with respect to the outside we have a low pressure at the bottom with respect to the outside so what's going to happen remember air moves from higher to lower pressure areas so it's a little tricky because the moving air itself is what's causing the pressure inside the building. And so the result is you have this negative pressure zone down low and it's negative with respect to the outside of the house. And so think, where is the air had a higher pressure? Outside the building. And so it's going to actually be pulled into the bottom. And the opposite is going to happen at the top. You have a high pressure zone here with respect to the outside outside of the building. So the air is going to move from outside, or excuse me, from inside to outside. And so at the end of the day, when you have a, a stack effect like th that's uh, like the one in this image, what's going to happen is you're going to get a lot of air leaking in the bottom of the house. Okay, a lot of air leaking in the bottom, and a lot of air leaking at the top. Now that being said, it all depends on 
how tightly sealed your building is. So this like all leads into that, you know, efficient building and green building aspects of it all. And that is if you can seal the top and the bottom of the house, that will really help prevent the stack effect from impacting your energy use. And if I want you to think about what time of year you're going to have the greatest stack effect. It's the time of year where you have the most the biggest uh, heat load inside the building or the most hot air moving in the building and that's going to be when it's cold outside and so you think about in the middle of the winter in your house it's really cold 10 let's say it's 10 degrees outside you have this big stack effect going on and you don't have a very tightly sealed um, top plate that's on your second story remember that when, when the air leaves at, for every CFM that goes out, another CFM has to come in, and most of that's going to come in toward the bottom. So now you have 10 degree cold outside air coming into your house, and you, the only way to stop that is to prevent that air from flowing. Okay, and so that's why stack effects are really important because this this happens naturally all the time in buildings, and the colder is outside, the more likely you are to have the stack effect, and then you have this cold air coming in the building again. Anytime a, a cubic foot leaves, a cubic foot has to be pulled back in. Okay, so that's your basic stack effect. Okay, so, um, right, so this is what's going to happen. You're going to have that air that's coming in through the bottom. It's basically like a suction that pulls it in. Okay, and again, that's because of the higher pressure with respect to the outside. It's pulling that air in. So it's not that the air is, I mean, that's, that's the only thing that makes that air move. It's just that delta P. Okay, so I did post a video about the stack effect in this week's folder, so make sure you watch that. It's a really good demonstration of how that can happen. Um, in, a, in this case, it's in a commercial building, but the same phenomenon happens in a residential building. And here is a really good illustration of the stack effect. So this is a cold day. You can see it's like there's some snow on the ground here, and we have a, like a, a four-story building that's under construction, and this is a tarp that's covering the corner of the building. Um, I want to feel free to press pause and, and tell me if you see any signs of positive pressure, um, of negative pressure, and also see if you can sort of pick out where the neutral pressure plane might be. So go ahead and press pause and figure that out. Right. So you can see at the top, it's, it's sort of like ballooned out at the top. That's the air trying to force its way out. That's your positive pressure. That's the stack effect that the air is sort of piling up there and trying to you know, the, the delta P is such that it's high pressure inside the building with respect to the outside, so it's trying to push the air out. And then at the bottom, you can see it's kind of sucked in against the, you know, whatever it is that's, you know, holding this up. Um, and that's your negative pressure. And somewhere in between, uh, you know, it's hard to tell from the image, but it's going to be wherever the two meet. And at that point, there's no, it's neutral pressure plane, so that means there's actually no air leaking in and out at that point. The air is all going to be leaking out above and in down below. Okay, so that's a really good illustration of that. And again, the further you get away from the neutral pressure plane, the bigger that magnitude of that positive pressure is up high, and the more negative it is down low. Okay, and so the implication for airflow in a building, and this actually is what happens, is if you have, um, like, you could have basically, you know, air leaks in this, where the neutral pressure plane is, and you're going to have very little um, air moving in and out of the building because it's the neutral pressure plane. So there's not a big delta P between inside and outside where this neutral pressure plane is. So yeah, you might have some leakage because of the wind blowing or whatever, but it's not going to be a big deal. Whereas up high and down low, that's where you really get a lot of leakage. Um, because again, because of the stack effect, right? And then I did post a video this week on how to seal the uh, rim joist and the uh, med mud sill. Um, I do suggest you watch that. It's nice to kind of see, you know, sort of talk almost theoretically about these building components in, in the stack effect. But it's good to see someone, an expert, show you exactly what you're looking at. It's kind of a review of some of the building uh, framing that we looked at before as well. Um, and it gives you some insight into the uh, efficiency of buildings. So there are some other ways that air moves in and out of a building um, that you can sort of um, change the, the pressure regime inside of a building. A really big one is um, exhaust fans and furnaces. So if you think about a furnace that's in a basement, okay, like in the image here, you have to draw air into the furnace to, for a combustion reaction. 
and then the flu takes the air out. Well, that air is leaving the building, which means there's air coming in somewhere else. So basically what you're doing is you're removing air from the building and you're actually depressurizing the whole building. So you can have a three-story house, four-story house, and it's all the way down in the basement. You have this furnace running. That's actually going to depressurize the entire house. It's this whole concept of house as a system. So you have to remember that, that anytime you move air out of a building, it's going to bring air in in other parts. Um, and it may be, it may not be right near where the air is leaving. Okay, so furnaces, just because they have to uh, reject the uh, combustion gases out of the building, they're bringing air in. Now there are ways you can get around that. Um, you can do what's called um, direct combustion, which will pull air from the outside to feed their combustion reaction. Um, that's a, sort of an advanced high efficiency uh, measure. Uh, that if we have time, we can talk about that later. But most standard furnaces. You pull air from inside the house, you dump it out, which means you're pulling air from outside the house into the house as well. And then anytime you have an exhaust fan, bathroom fan, kitchen fan, whatever, a laundry uh, in the basement, right, so, or laundry in any floor, as that air moves out, that hot, hot, moist air from the laundry, you're taking air from in the building and you're rejecting it out the building, which means air is going to come back in somewhere else. So see if I'm out, see if I'm in. So if you think about it, you can really depressurize a building without even thinking about it. You're running an exhaust fan in a bathroom, maybe you have another bathroom, maybe there's a kitchen fan, there could be a laundry. You could really depressurize the building and that can um, really pull in some cold air. So again, you think about it in the middle of the winter or the middle of the summer when it's 90 degrees outside, you're running an exhaust fan, um, you're, pulling, you're pulling hot air in the building. Um, so think about that next time you're running an exhaust fan um, in, in any time of year. So um, unbalanced ducts can also cause uh, pressure differences. So you can see this is sort of an oversimplified um, illustration, but if you have two rooms in a building, there's a supply in one and return in the other, you're going to end up with a positive pressure zone where the supply is. I think that makes sense, right? You're forcing air toward that uh, and you're going to have a negative um, where the, re the return is located. So ideally you want to have a supply and return in every room. Um, and this is something you look for on um, energy audits as well. And so, again, you can cause all these weird pressure imbalances all throughout the building. So the, the green is supply, and this one has a whole a whole uh, hall or a whole floor return, which is not uncommon in older buildings where you just have one return vent um, for the whole floor. And so in this case, you're going to have these positive pressure zones here because there's only supply. And here, there's actually the air is leaving and trying to get to the... Um, return. So you're going to have all these negative pressure zones all throughout the building. Here you're going to have another positive. Here you're going to have another positive. So that's going to cause air to leak out of the building. This can cause air to leak in the building. So you can actually have all these different zones within a building. Um, and finally, uh, one thing we do is ener in energy auditing, a really important tool is something called a blower door. Um, and what this does is it's a uh, door that um, you put it in the an exterior doorway. It's a giant fan and what you do is you depressurize the building. So you cause this big negative pressure zone in the building. What that does is it forces air to come in all these little direct and indirect leakage areas um, that you, um, and it can really help you identify leaky um, areas in a building. Um, and also it can help you tell you know, missing insulation, sometimes water damage and so forth. But a blower door the way it works is you again it's all about pressure okay so you're pulling air out of the building which lowers the pressure and then you have this low pressure zone in the building with respect to outside and it forces air to come in all those little cracks that you wouldn't normally see and I'll, I'll post a video about um, up running a blower door as well and the infrared camera is a, um, a really good way um, to uh, use along with a blower door and I'll show you some pictures from an infrared camera here in a minute Okay, so um, now you know what the wind effect is, what the stack effect is, and how the stack effect can have um, an impact on efficiency. Also, how some of the unbalanced HVAC and how exhaust fans and furnaces can impact the um, pressure regime inside of a building as well.